We want to create a society that encourages people to define themselves by their material possessions. Because what we're trying to create is the good consumer. And of course, what does the marketing, what do the marketing campaigns focus on to try and get us to buy their shit? They focus on our fears. And our fears. And what is the primary fear that they focus on? You're not good enough, exactly. And more, more poignantly, not getting laid. <laughs> and I'm told that applies to both sexes. <laughs> I'm not going to have a debate on that subject. <laughs> I'm going to show you a photograph that was taken, uh, I think it was a week or so, 10 days or so ago, in an area of very, very high unemployment in the UK an area that is regarded as one of the poorest areas in the UK. A city of Liverpool. It's a lot better than it was, but nonetheless it's still regarded as uh, some way down the line. Look at this. This is the Apple store on the day of the release of the latest iPhone. Not a lot of evidence of poverty or austerity there, is there? Because they're queuing up to buy a 500 pound, what's that, about 5,000 kroner, a 5,000 kroner phone. And this is the result of the sort of phenomenal marketing campaign to launch you know, the, new, the new iPhone. Well, when I first started to get interested in this subject some years ago, I came across this book, Subliminal Seduction. And it was, the front cover says, are you being sexually aroused by this picture? Well... <laughs> no, don't think so. Think I'm okay. But the issue here is that whether or not you think you're being sexually aroused, supposedly the marketeers believe that this is the type of image that would get you sexually aroused and therefore get you to buy their products. And I'm going to show you a few ads here. And because I'm obviously sharing this issue with you, you know what you're looking for, so obviously it's going to be pretty blatant. But what you've got to take into account is that the vast majority of people don't look at an ad like they would a piece of art on a wall of an art gallery. It's something that is often just caught in the peripheral vision. And so the ad has to make an impact in that fraction of a second in your peripheral vision. And this is why today a neuroscientist can earn more working with a marketing agency than they can in academic research. And every major marketing agency in the US and the UK employs neuroscientists. Here's the first ad. I think this is for Gap jeans. Obviously appealing to both sexes. If you wear Gap jeans, you might get laid. Here's something that's a little bit more um, blatant. If Unless you wear Tom Ford aftershave, you're not going to get down her cleavage. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> we have lost everything. Now, if I was a conspiracy theorist, Ah, oh, we've got the mouse. Ah, there we go. Thank you. You may wave your magic wand. Yes. Or elsewhere. And with this aftershave, you might get real lucky. Yes, it pushes the boundaries. Absolutely. Well, the marketing industry itself is beginning to recognize this. 